Hi, I'm Danny, and these are my diecast disasters. In this video, I'm going to be taking this old Hot Wheels letter getter. It's a mail van, and I'm going to be customizing it into Bob's Burgers food truck. And that's from the episode Food Truckin' from the second season. And that was all the way back in 2012. So just taking a closer look at our letter getter. It's got those janky plastic opening doors on the rear. Uh, you can see those front pillars are both bent too. Hot Wheels uh, produced these from 1977. And this paint job I think was for the first three years. I did a red line version of this. So there's uh, one post holding it together, and I'll drill that out. Got that big classic chunky base that the old Hot Wheels generally had. Alright, so I can pop the base off. Then there's the plastic interior with those doors. Sort of quite a tight fit at the back there. Uh, someone might have sent me this van a while back. I have trouble remembering now. I do have a couple of them in similarly rough condition. There's the interior. So if you did send it in, thanks a bunch. I always really appreciate it. Uh, there's the windscreen. Okay, now I'm going to strip the paint off of that casting bit of paint stripper on there and then the paint all wrinkles up and I can wash it off and I gave it a quick go over with the wire brush and my Dremel to get rid of the oxidation. I'm going to use these small pliers here to very carefully straighten up those front pillars. Fingers crossed I don't break them. There we go, that one's looking pretty straight. So, I don't know if it looks like it, but I'm being pretty careful. Putting gentle pressure on it, uh, pushing the bent bit out. There, it's starting to get straighter. I'll just do a little bit more. And there, that's looking nice and straight now. Easy as. Okay, now I need to cut the window out of the side. So I've just used a piece of uh, masking tape to mark off where I want it to be. And next I'm going to use a small drill and drill out each of those corners. And once I had those marked out, I used a cutting disc on my Dremel. So I've cut the top and the bottom and then the diagonal and part way in on each side. Then I could just use my little hammer here and a punch and gently knock those pieces out. I had been kind of imagining using my jeweler's saw, but then once I had the holes drilled, I realized there was not really any way to get it in there. Okay, there we go. There's the rough hole cut out. Now I use some files to tidy that up. Right, there we go. You can hand out a few burgers through that. Uh, now the rear wheel arches on Bob's truck sort of go over the wheels a little bit. So I'm just going to use some of this epoxy putty here to fill up the top of the wheel wells. So I've used the masking tape to give me a flat backing on the inside and then just pressing in the uh, epoxy putty really well. Mm -hmm. 
So this is quite fast setting epoxy. It's sort of already half cured. Now I'm just going to quickly cut off some of the excess, uh, particularly on this side as it'll just mean less filing and sanding later on. And then I'm also going to score a line along where that other panel line is on the side there and that'll be where I'll cut the top of the wheel well off. And then I can leave that for another 10-20 minutes to fully cure. Okay now it's nice and hard. I'm going to take out the tape from the inside. And start filing it down smooth. It'll be quite gentle to start with and once I've filed it down so that I can sort of see the edges of the metal I'm going to soak it all in some thin super glue. And it's just gonna kind of soak in there and set and help to toughen it all up. And then once that's fully cured, I'll go back to filing it down. And then I can file to that score line that I made. And then onto some sandpaper to finish it off. So I designed a window frame and some rear doors. And I've printed those using my resin printer. So the window frame just fits nice and snugly in there. The hole that I made. And the rear doors fit in the back there. So that's the body sorted for now. We can move on to the base. I'm going to be taking those old wheels and axles out. A little bit rusty there. So to remove the axles I just bent it up a little bit and then I'm going to cut part way through. I needed to bend this one more and use a smaller cutting disc. And then you can just give the wheel a wiggle and it'll snap off. And then you can pull the axle out. This one was a bit bent and rusty so I had to prise it out there. There we go, that wheel snap off and that axle came out nice and easy. Uh, next I'll give this a clean up with the wire brush and my Dremel. There's never any paint on this but it's quite uh, oxidised. There we go. It's looking nice and clean now. Uh, so I've 3D printed some new wheels. And I've printed thinner ones for the rear because they're going to tuck in under the wheels and I don't really have to want to have to um, chop out that great big chunky base if I don't have to. So yeah they're just the right size to tuck in there but you can see there's a couple of little uh, lumps or spaces on the base there. You can see how they're going to tuck in under the. Oh, they're going to tuck in under the body. But yeah, there's those little lumps in there. So I'm going to um, take a little sanding drum on my Dremel and remove those. go yeah, easily removed I'm not going to remove the ones on the front and 
I'll just get my camera to focus there. There it goes. So this is a steel rod I'm going to be using for axles and of course it doesn't fit through the um, hole there. So I've just got my pin vise and a small drill and I'll drill out both of those holes under the, the tabs there. And so there's the axles fitting through there now. Here's the interior. It's looking a bit grubby. So I gave it a wash with some soapy water. And then I'm going to cut off these janky rear doors. They never really fit great. So there's the rear doors removed, and then that can fit in there like that. There's a little tab on the back of it, and it goes into that little notch there, and then when the rear door's in, that'll hold it in on the top of the notch as well. I designed and 3D printed this little grill here. And a few bottles and jars up on the top shelf as well and they're just going to fit in there like that so I've glued that in place and I think that's pretty much all the fabricating I had to do so it's time for some paint so I'll start out painting the body of the van it's been given a couple of nice coats of clean white. Uh, next I mask off just the roof there and I hit that with a nice light blue. And now I can take off that masking. Always have your fingers crossed that the masking is going to come out tidy especially when you've done body work with um, putty or something because the paint stripper will generally ruin that if you have to repaint so you can see I'm taking off the masking tape quite gently and slowly and I'm pulling it away from the blue paint and yeah nice and slowly because you really don't want to lift the white paint up Okay, there we go. There's all that masking off and it looks like we've got a nice tidy straight line. So our van's got its blue roof. Here are the decals that I've printed out for it. So I'll just apply them. I've just uh, set the window frame in there to make sure that I get the decal in the right place. Uh, so that's that side done and then the other side. There's a uh, little mind your children that went on the rear over the back doors. So there we go, there's the decals on. I've also detailed that uh, rear door handle there with some silver. And there was not really any other detailing to do uh, except some rust patches. So yeah, I've got some rust orange there and some um, German red brown and just applying a couple of 
small rust patches with a sponge. Somewhere along the way, I misplaced the windscreen for this, but it didn't matter because I was going to replace it with this clear plastic anyway. And here's another little piece of clear plastic for the rear window, uh, but to make that a bit cooler, I've printed out this uh, glass texture with Tina's face poking up there. And I've just printed that on some A4 paper and then I'll cut it out and glue it onto the plastic window that I've cut out. There we go, and then I can stick that in to the rear windows there. Onto the base again, I've masked off the front bumper and painted the grill white. Remove that masking there. There we go, that's looking nice and tidy. And then I use some silver and transparent orange just to detail the lights and the indicators and the grill. Okay, here's those wheels again. I've given them a base coat of black. Uh, then I've made these little masks. 3D printed mask and that's going to mask off the outside of the wheel and then I could spray paint the insides white and then I uh, hand painted the hubcaps blue. So there we go, nice light blue hubcaps to match the roof and white rimmed wheels. And then I've just cut out some new axles from that rod that we were looking at earlier and use a bit of glue to glue on the new wheels. Here's the interior after I've given it a coat of silver and then I just detail the dash and the seat and the condiments up the top of the grill there. Here's some doodads to go on the roof. So there's a couple of sort of grills um, and a speaker for the front. Now yeah, I've detailed those in silver and black. So now I can pretty much assemble the van. So there's the interior going in. And then the base on. And then I drilled and tapped that post earlier so I can use a little button head screw to hold it all together again. Next I can put that in a window frame in. Giving that a coat of silver there. And I'm going to use a little bit of glue to glue the uh, grills and stuff onto the roof. And so that's our Bob's Burgers food truck pretty much done. I'll put that aside and we're going to move on to our diorama base. 
Here is a Bob's Burgers restaurant that I've printed on my 3D printer. I had to cut it into two parts to stop it sort of warping. Uh, you can find this model on Thingiverse. So I'm just using some epoxy putty here to fill in any gaps where I've glued the two pieces together. There we go, I'll just leave that to cure. Alright, so here's our Bob's Burgers restaurant glued together. Um, the back's all cured now and I'm just going to use a little bit of sandpaper to smooth that off. And once that's tidied up on the back there a bit, I can just go straight into painting it. So I've started off with a base coat of white primer and I painted the rear black. Next I gave it a couple of coats of this bright green that Bob's Burgers restaurant is. Uh, and then I hand painted, very painstakingly hand painted all the yellow windows and stuff. Took quite a few coats and took quite a long time. Uh, so here I've masked off the sign and I hit that with red. There's how that's looking after the masking was removed. Starting to look bit more like Bob's Burgers restaurant now. They have detailed the door and the window frames and stuff. Uh, and here's some signs I've made on Photoshop and printed on A4 paper. And I've just cut them out. So there's the Bob's Burgers sign. And I'm going to use some PVA glue to apply those. So just a thin layer down of the PVA glue there. And then I can stick the paper sign in. And once you've stuck the paper sign in, you can seal it all with some uh, varnish clear coat. So here's the sign with the burger on it. So that was given a coat of silver. And then using the PVA glue again to glue uh, the hamburger in. There's a hamburger that goes on both sides of the sign. And once this was all dried, I finished this with a coat of gloss varnish. And there we go. Here it is after I'd put the uh, clear coat on it. And then I could use a little bit of glue to glue that onto the front there. I'm using thick super glue for this. Give me a little bit of time to position it. Here is the interior and the uh, top windows. I've printed them out on A4 paper. I'm just using some clear plastic from this old 
uh, green light wheels pack. There, I've cut out all the windows and stuff. And again, I'm just using some glue to glue those onto the clear plastic. Okay, so I'll stick all of those onto pieces of plastic and let them dry and then I cut them out so there I've got all my windows and then I could stick those all in place from behind so there's our shop frontage I uh, just need to do the base now so I've got a piece of high density foam here and I've cut out the pavement and the road and also a notch where I'm going to fit the restaurant in. Next I'm going to use a pencil to make some lines in the pavement. Uh, and then using the pencil still, I'm going to draw in just a few cracks and chips here and there. So yeah, there's a few cracks and stuff in the pavement. I'm going to pull out just a few little chips of foam here and there around the sides of the base and then once you've painted it up it looks a lot like chipped concrete just tidy it up with a bit of sandpaper and then again using the pencil to draw in some more cracks around the sides of the base Uh, here is a little planter that I designed and printed. I'll just mark around that and then I can cut out a little notch where that's going to go. Right, so the little planter just fit in there like that. Here's a couple of little pipe sections that I've printed. And these are just going to stick out of the side of the base here. So it's quite soft foam. I can just pretty much press them in to where I want them to be. Okay, I'm happy with them. So uh, here I've got a little bit of sand and I've mixed that up with some PVA glue. And I'm going to use that to stick them in. So I'll just put some in the hole to start with. Then I can just put the pipe in there and then use some more of the sand and glue mixture to fill up the gaps. Uh, 
and I'll also spread a little bit round just to try and make it a look a bit more natural. So there we go, there's that one done. And the same with the other pipe. So I'll let those dry. There we go. Let's see how they're looking after it's dried. So now I can start painting it. I give it a base coat of acrylic black primer. I don't use rattle cans on this foam generally because it melts it. Then a lighter grey over the top of that. And then I'm going to paint all over that with a black wash. Get into all those lines and cracks, etc. Here's how, how that looks after it's dried. So uh, next I'm going to take a dry brush and dry brush all over with some white just to bring out all those details and stuff. Looks particularly good when you pull the chips off of the foam. Looks like broken concrete. Next, I'm going to tar seal the road. So I've got some more sand here and some black and white acrylic paint. I'm going to mix all of those up together. Then I can spread that over my road to give it a tar seal. So I'm trying to get it as even and smooth as I can. And then I can leave that to dry. It takes a little while, that thick of paint. Uh, once that had dried, I painted the two pipes in silver. And then I'm putting a dark uh, rust wash over them. And once that had dried, I'll put a black wash over that. I use some thick super glue to glue the shop onto the base. It's quite snugly in that notch there, so that helps to hold it in place. And finally, here is a little tree that I've made. And then I used a little bit of glue to stick that into the planter there. And that is our base finished. So that was a bit of work, uh, but just before we take a look at the finished items, let's just take a quick look back at what we started with. Here's our scruffy looking Hot Wheels letter getter from way back in the late 70s. And we're going to be giving it a Bob's Burgers food truck makeover. And here it is, our finished Hot Wheels Bob's Burgers food truck made out of an old letter getter. Just like it is in the cartoon. There's Tina peering out of the back. The signs, it looks like the kids painted them. So I think it's looking pretty cool now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. 
There's some links and stuff to check out down there as well. Uh, there's my Patreon link down there if you want to help support the show. Thanks heaps to my Patreons for sticking in there and continuing to support the show. Uh, I've been a bit slack on videos this last month, but I do have some pretty cool uh, ones planned coming up. Thanks heaps for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and stuff if you want to see more similar content. And stay tuned for the pictures of the finished diorama. Take care and I'll catch you in the next one.